Okay, there we go. We got it, Bill. They figured it out. <laughs> All right, so Nothing welcome everybody to our six week partner summer shred. A couple of you guys have done uh, challenges with us before and are back. Some of you are new. We're gonna go over all the details with you. We did change some things up to keep this fresh. So even if you've done it before, we've got some new twists this year or this time around. Hit it, Renee. She let me do this by myself this time. It's like I graduated. Yeah. All right, so a little overview of what we're doing. Um, we're gonna talk about some goals. So everybody was supposed to come here today with a short and a long-term goal in mind. Short term being the next six weeks, long term meaning what happens after the challenge is over, right? We want to create something that's sustainable and not just the next six weeks. Um, we're going to talk about the foundations of nutrition, a little bit of education, but we have learned from past kickoffs that it can be overwhelming and too much information. So each week we're going to actually send you out a little bit of information education wise about nutrition. That way you get it in smaller doses and it doesn't feel overwhelming. We're gonna give you your meal plan today. Each one is specifically tailored to your goals and your body size. Um, we're gonna show you how to set up my fitness pal. Um, it's going to help you log and track your food. And then we're gonna talk about what are the rules of the point system, and most importantly, how do we win? All right, so we wanted to start first with just some common myths. We are very anti-fad diet here. Our philosophy around food is eat real food, not too much, mostly plants, right? So what that means is we don't really ascribe to keto, paleo, intermittent fasting. While all those things can work, we just have this holistic view of food. So the first one is you cannot tone fat. Um, those commercials that you see, Suzanne Summers with the thigh master, like we cannot tone fat. What we try to do is we try to lose body fat in an effort to see the muscle that we have. And some of us, our goal is to build more skeletal muscle mass um, and that's how we look lean and look as toned as we want, but we can't tone fat. Eating less means losing weight. It's not actually true. In fact, our goal is to have you eating so much on this particular challenge that you actually don't feel hungry. It's really about eating the right foods in the right quantities and not eating the wrong foods too much. Carbs are bad. This is, a, this is a myth, this is false, it's out there right now. The truth is carbs are our body's primary source of fuel, is what our body likes to use the most. For those of you, which is most if not all of you, who exercise or especially do CrossFit with us for our move class, um, your body needs carbohydrates, whole process, un, like unprocessed carbohydrates, um, in order to fuel your workouts. So we're not gonna be anti-carb. We're also not anti-fat. Um, most of the time when something goes to low fat or no fat, they're adding a lot of sugar. And so don't fear the fat. If I work out, I can eat anything. Raise your hand if you have had this mentality before. <laughs> we start working out, we get hungrier, and it's like I can eat whatever I want because I'm working out. And the truth is our nutrition should support our goal, not work in opposition to them. Losing weight means losing body fat. This is also not true. One of the things that we find is that most Americans are under protein. They don't eat enough protein and that is the macronutrient specifically that's gonna help us build muscle. So sometimes when we lose weight, if we're not eating the right foods, we end up losing muscle and not losing the body fat that we're trying to lose. <laughs> All right, let's start with some questions. And these are things I want you to really think about and ask yourself. One, are you consistently eating three to four meals a day? Or are you somebody who doesn't eat very much in the morning and then binges at night? Do you eat a healthy breakfast but skip lunch and then find yourself starving? And are you somebody that just freezes all day long? We wanna eat in a way that supports, again, our goals. So think three to four meals or feedings, if you will, each day. Do you balance each meal with and meal and snack with a source of protein, carbs, and fat? Fats and carbs are really easy to overeat. We are gonna to try to suggest that you try to have protein with each of your meals as well. Because again, like I said, most people just don't get enough protein. Do you drink 60 to 80 ounces of water a day? Something that I'm definitely working on myself as well. But keep in mind, water serves tons of purposes. Number one of which, it helps you to absorb the nutrients within your food. 
Do you eat protein and carbs before and after your workout? Again, food should support our workouts just like our goals. And so having something to eat before you come into the gym and work out is going to help you improve your performance in the gym. How often are you eating out? When we eat out at restaurants, even when we're eating things that we think are good choices off the menu, the truth is we don't know what's in our food. We're better off cooking for ourselves. Who hates to cook? Okay, we're gonna, <laughs> put your hand. We're, gonna no. we're gonna try and find some easy ways to kind of shortcut the meal prep process to make eating at home a little bit more adjustable on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, how many of you have ever tracked or logged your food? Think of my fitness pal, a food journal, RP strength, my macros, there's all different things. It almost doesn't matter what you choose. By writing it down, you become more accountable to yourself and more mindful of what it is that you're eating. If we walk around and we have the Hershey Kiss, if we have the couple of chips, if I eat the chicken nuggets off my son's plate, right, right, who's guilty of that, right, then we're not accountable for it, we're not mindful of it. So just simply writing things down or tracking our food just makes us more mindful of what it is we're putting in our body. Do you focus more on quality or quantity? So there are these two ideas when it comes to food and most diets try to ascribe to or fix one of these things. When we talk about quality, we're talking about like whole foods. But even if we're eating whole foods, if we eat too much of them, we can become overweight. If we focus just on quantity, right, then the problem is are we eating good foods, foods that are gonna get us the aesthetic that we want. So while weight is determined by the amount of calories we take in versus the calories we put out, the, the aesthetic, the actual like tone of your body is what you're putting into the quality of the food that you eat. And then what do you feel like is your biggest nutrition challenge? And we asked each one of you this question when we sat down with you. What's going to be your biggest challenge? Is it going to be the water, the sleep, the quality of food, the quantity of food, the alcohol? What's going to be the biggest challenge? Because we're going to try and curb that this time around. What have you done in the past that has either worked well or not worked well? If something works well for you, then we're going to just try to absolutely tailor into that that has worked well. If it hasn't, well then we know that it doesn't work well or it's not sustainable, right? All of us have probably tried diets that worked in the interim, but in longevity, they just didn't last. All right, so this time around, we're focusing on the five pillars of health. Right, Bill? Uh, Bill and I have talked about this a couple of times, and he's actually my inspiration for this five pillars of health this time around. So the five pillars of health are the quality of food, whole unprocessed foods, Quantity of food, how much are we eating of each of these foods? Hydration, exercise, and sleep. And so each week, we are gonna come to you with a short video, no more than two or three minutes. It's gonna be a little bit about education, a little bit about whatever of the pillars of health we're focusing on that week. So for example, the first week of the challenge, we're gonna focus on quality of food. So you're gonna get a great little video from Renee tomorrow about quality of food. From there, we're gonna also send you a little informational slide about things that you can do to help improve the quality of your food. Some tips and tricks, right, for things in the kitchen that you can readily apply to getting in more whole, unprocessed food. A recipe that you can implement that week if you like. And then some kind of partner challenge, right? So each partner challenge will be something you and your partner do. You get bonus points and we have weekly prizes for the partners who win that week's challenge. All right, so in order to win this challenge, you've gotta accumulate the most participation points. We get points for daily workouts, seven plus hours of sleep a night, enough water each day, logging your food in MyFitnessPal, eating clean, which means no uh, processed food, no sugars, no alcohol, three balanced meals a day with protein, carbs, and fat. There will also be, like I said, bonus points for those partner challenge. So what this means is maybe you've got a birthday party and you're not willing to sacrifice having that piece of cake. Even that said, you can still get your points for your workout that day, your sleep, and your water. And you can even log that birthday cake, right? So it doesn't have to be all or nothing. 
you can accumulate points even on the days where you know you may not be perfect. All right, so in your folders, you will see where it says six week challenge uh, nutrition handbook. I'm gonna have you take that out. Can you grab some pens? Yeah. Great. If you need a pen, let Abby know she's We're gonna turn into the inside cover. And like I said, we ask each one of you to come with a long and a short term goal in mind. All right? And Renee, I'll have you hit that button just one more time for me. All right, your goal should be something that's well-defined and clear to anyone. We want to have one nutrition goal and we want to have one performance goal. So for me, a nutrition goal might be to make sure that I'm drinking that 60 to 80 hours of, uh, 60 to 80 hours, 60 to 80, 80 ounces of water a day. It might be to have more protein with my breakfast, to eat vegetables with my breakfast. It might be to uh, lose a certain amount of body fat over this challenge, right? So any one of those are fine for nutrition. When it comes to performance, there are certain things I want to be able to do. Maybe I want to run my mile. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to get a strict pull. -up. I want to be able to pick up my kids and put them over my head, right? Whatever your performance goal is totally up to you, but I'm gonna give you a moment now to write down a nutrition and a performance goal. And if we are focusing on body fat and skeletal muscle mass, just a couple things to keep in mind in terms of setting realistic expectations. We can expect to lose one to one and a half pounds of body fat a week, which generally equates to one to 2% of body fat a month. The same is true when we're talking about gaining skeletal muscle mass. We can expect to gain one to one and a half pounds of skeletal muscle mass each week which accounts to maybe three or four pounds of skeletal muscle a month. So I'm gonna give you a minute. I'm gonna write down one performance goal, one nutrition goal. Don't worry just yet about the action steps. You're gonna write one down for your short term and one each down for your long term. So nutrition and performance, short term goals, nutrition and performance, long term goals. And again, short term means in the next six weeks, if I accomplish this by the end of the challenge, I will be so glad that I did this challenge. And then one of each for the long term, which means in the next six months or a year, if I continue to do what I've done on this challenge, I see this in my horizon. Okay, we'll leave the action steps for just a moment. We're gonna talk about how to come up with good action steps. Are within your control, right? So for drinking more water, I can commit to filling that water bottle up each night, right? If what I'm trying to do is get my pull up, I can commit to spending five to ten minutes three times a week to moving towards that pulling strength. I can commit to running 400 meters after each of my classes, right? So again, when we create these action steps, we want them to be specific action-based things that you know you can control and you can do that if you do consistently will help you to achieve those results. Because at the end of the day, your motivation will win, right? And eventually, you're gonna need to fall back onto these habits when you have no motivation, and it's going to be the habits that are gonna carry you through, not just the short term, but the long-term goal. So for each, all I want you to do is write down just one action step for your short-term nutrition and performance goal that you know you can commit to that will help you achieve that short-term goal. And maybe think about what it is you said was your biggest challenge. The thing you need to work on the most 
in order to achieve your goal. So a specific, actionable, measurable step that will help you to achieve that short-term goal. And again, if we do these things enough times, eventually these habits will carry us through when we don't have the motivation. Renee? And so James Clear basically said, this is how you become someone who drinks enough water. You become the person who doesn't order dessert. You become the person who exercises daily. Because habitually, that's just who you are. And that's kind of what we want out of this, right? That's how we carry it sustainably into the future. All right. So one of the simplest methods we can use to change our eating habits is just to use the plate method. And for those of you who are not ready or who don't want to weigh and measure your food, that's okay, that's not necessary, right? The plate serves as a great foundation for making sure we're getting the right quantities of food. And so what we're gonna encourage is basically a quarter of our plate to be protein, and we're gonna talk about what that looks like, a quarter of our plate to be starches, and oatmeal, rice, and potatoes are all okay on this challenge. And then half of our plate to be veggies. And the truth is, veggies are infinite. You can have as many as you want. All right, so we're gonna start with protein. And as I'm doing this, you will see where it says on the next page, macros, protein, some tips and tricks. So all you have to do is turn it over, right? Why? <clears throat> Protein provides our body basically with the amino acids that it needs to build muscle. Muscle is a very expensive tissue. The more muscle that we have, the more calories we burn at rest. It's why, ladies, we look at our husband and after three days of not eating their morning donut, they've lost 10 pounds. It's completely unfair, right? But essentially, they have more muscle mass than we do, which basically means they burn more calories at rest. So by eating protein, we build muscle. By having muscle, we burn calories even when we're not working out, right? So a couple of pro tips. We're gonna try and choose some lean sources of protein, right? Doesn't mean we can't have the occasional bacon, we can't have the chicken wings, but we are gonna try to stick to more lean proteins. Um, and we're gonna try to eat them in the right quantities, meaning a quarter of our plate. So we can have grilled chicken, we can have salmon, we can have steak. Peanut butter is not a protein. So we are gonna stay away from having a quarter of our plate be peanut butter. But there is a place, there is a place for nut butter. It is not off the table, it's just not a quarter of our plate. All right, carbohydrates. If you look at the bottom of that next sheet, again, we're not anti-carb. Carbs are going to be 40% of our diet. They are gonna be another quarter of our plate. Right? What we're trying to try to stick to though are whole unpressed carbohydrates. What they do is they break down at their most basic levels into glucose, like a sugar. Our body prefers glucose over every other macronutrient in order to fuel its system. So think of carbohydrates as like the gas to your car. You certainly wouldn't drive your car without gas. Don't run your body without those carbohydrates either. We're just gonna try and stick to them in the right quantities, which again, quarter of your plate. So, Good carbohydrates to have, right? Fruit, um, we can try sweet potatoes, white potatoes, I don't discriminate. We can try white, like, white rice, um, brown rice, black rice, salt, oatmeal, squash. Uh, we also try to make sure that these carbohydrates have as much fiber as possible. So as opposed to drinking our fruits, we're gonna really encourage you to eat them. When you eat an apple, the fiber that it has is exponentially more than if you were to juice it, right? So we wanna to try to stick to carbohydrates that have a lot of good fiber in them, and again, unprocessed, because they don't have any added sugars. Natural sugars that we get in fruit are 100% okay. So, broccoli, vegetable, but also carbohydrate. Berries are great, tons of fiber. Oatmeal, great breakfast option. We'll talk about some overnight oats. Donuts, mm. 
not the carbohydrate we're going for this. <laughs> All right, folks. And then last but not least, fat. And so if you turn it over, you will see on the back side, fat. Fat, in terms of caloric value, protein and carbohydrates are four calories per gram. Fat is nine calories per gram. So what we have to make sure of is that, again, we're eating a little bit cleaner fats and that we're eating them in moderation, right? So you didn't see fat necessarily on my plate, but we often cook with fat with the use of olive oil or avocado oil, coconut oil. We'll have fat in terms of our fattier meats, like a chicken thigh or like a fattier piece of steak. And then that's where nut butter absolutely can come in. And so if we're gonna do like a nut butter or an avocado, we're just gonna try to keep it to a thumb size portion or a tablespoon portion at each of our meals. Just because calorically, it carries a bit more uh, calories than the other two. But fat is delicious, right? And it's just super easy to overeat. We need fat in our diet because one, it keeps us satiated, it keeps us full longer, right? It breaks down slower than either of the other macronutrients and it keeps us full. Also help you, helps to regulate our hormones in terms of estrogen and testosterone. So avocado, oil, or regular avocado, great source of fat. Nuts and seeds, fantastic source of fat. Olive oil, uh, we're gonna try and stay away from like the vegetable oil and canola oil. And maybe not the pizza this time around. All right, so as we begin to reshape our plate, we're gonna load up on whole foods. So if you look at my food options guide, which is on the next page, I really want you to think about food inclusively. Let's not focus on that which we're not having, but rather trying foods that maybe we've never had before. Who knew that you loved Brussels sprouts? Who knew, right? Who knew that black rice even existed and then you had it and your life was forever changed, right? So we're gonna try and load up on whole foods. This is gonna keep us full and satiated and keep us from feeling hungry even though calorically, we're probably eating fewer calories than we were before, right? So real foods are our main goal. Now, again, we're gonna try and focus on carbohydrates that have lots of fiber. That's also gonna help us keep us regular. So when we look at our uh, MyFitnessPal, I'll show you where you can find fiber. Women, we're trying to get 25 grams of fiber a day. Guys, 35 grams of fiber a day, okay? Now, we're also gonna try and choose leaner meats. This is not to say that the others are off limits, but if you see here, these cream star lean meats are great sources of protein that don't have a ton of added fat. So it can be chicken breast, but also think about shrimp, scallops, all different kinds of seafood. Um, whey protein is a great option. Egg whites, in addition to some of your eggs, is a great way to supplement a little bit more protein without getting necessarily all the extra fat. For this challenge, because we want it to be sustainable, we're not outlawing dairy, right? People like dairy and it's a great source of protein. Even if you choose to have it full fat or zero fat, it makes no difference to us. So on this challenge, you are allowed to have Greek yogurt and cottage cheese, right? They're great sources of protein and they make for easy breakfast, great for pre and post workout as well. We're also allowing milk as well, because I know some of you can't have your coffee without your milk. So that's absolutely acceptable. We are going to try to stay away from cheese because while delicious, right, it is heavier in fat content and super easy to overeat. So maybe just for the six weeks we say, ah, I'm gonna eliminate it. And then we bring it back slowly in smaller quantities when we're ready. All right, so my food chart here, you also have in your folder, but it is more or less very similar to the one that you're looking at in front of you. And again, our focus is consider including more foods that you've never tried, not thinking about the ones that you can't have. Again, we're trying to create new habits. You are in some habits right now that you said, I don't like, I'm willing to change. And so as we do this, right, creating new breakfasts that we like instead of the ones that we have, right, hopefully will become sustainable even after the challenge is over. One of the big things that we're gonna try to watch out for, and we're gonna give you a snack in a second because who talks about food this much and then doesn't feed you? So we're gonna give you a snack in a second. 
And what we're really looking for in our foods, but especially our snacks, is avoiding added sugar. If you look at the back of the milk label, yes, it has sugar. That's included in the lactose from the cow. Totally. You look at the back of yogurt, same thing. Fruit, sugar, fine, fine, fine. What we want to avoid is added sugar, right? And sugar actually goes by 52 different names, whether we're calling it um, corn syrup or organic sugar, organic brown sugar. It's all sugar, and that's what we're trying to avoid. And in fact, if you read the ingredients, right, they need to list sugar there as well. So when we are looking for snacks, trying to pair protein and carbs together, of course, but some things that we are allowing this time around are X bars. Now, more carbohydrate and fat. I'd love it if you could pair it with some protein as well, but we are allowing RX bars, and I'm gonna give you one in a second. If you've never tried one, you can try it. We're allowing perfect bars. Perfect bars are made from nut butters, so a little bit higher in fat, right? But there's no added sugar, which is what we love. One or Quest bars, which use either stevia or sucralose. Now, if it was up to me, I would always stick to more real foods, but I understand that life is something where every once in a while we just need that thing to grab and go. And so I want this to be sustainable. I would prefer better choices over perfect choices because better choices are sustainable when perfect choices are not, okay? So sugar, we stay away from because it has a huge inflammatory response. It's what causes type 2 diabetes. It's what causes sometimes that belt buckle to feel a little bit tighter, even if we haven't gained any weight. So most illnesses stem from inflammation. So the less added sugar we can eat, the better off we are. And just up here, just keep in mind, there are some really easy switches we can make. If we stay away from the Prego spaghetti sauce that has added sugar, an opt for Classico, and I'll send you a list of these easy swaps, Classico, there's no added sugar. If we switch to a bolt house dressing, which has no added sugar, versus what you find in Kraft, you're better off. Right? If we sit, switch to a sugar-free ketchup over regular ketchup, you're never gonna know the difference, right? And that's the idea. What switches can we make that are so easy we're never even gonna notice that we've made a healthier choice? That's gonna what it's gonna let you have a cupcake later on where you're gonna know the difference. Alright? So we're gonna try our best to shop the perimeter of the store. If we can stay away from the inner aisles, you're doing a real good job. All right, we're gonna show you in a second how to check the label for that added sugar. Actually, why don't we do that now? So we're gonna pause here for a second. Renee and Abby are gonna give you a choice of two different snacks. So the first is the RX bar that I talked to you about a second ago. Uh, they're all basically made with dates, right? These might be chocolate chips, so these might have a tiny bit of sugar. They're the only ones I could find. But they're all different flavors of RX bars. The other one is an even better choice than an RX bar, it's called a Fuel for Fire. It's made with completely whole foods, no added sugars. This is a chocolate banana, but we have strawberry, uh, strawberry something, sweet potato apple, um, coffee, all different kinds. The Fuel for Fires we sell here, but they sell them at the grocery store as well. RX bars you can find at Walmart or any grocery store. <laughs> and when you get a second off, I'll take one of each. Why we steer clear, which is why we say that some are okay. I would be careful. I didn't look too closely at the chocolate chip. This one may actually have a little bit of added sugar, but this is an okay option. I don't know. It's a zero. On the zero box. sugar. Yeah. So I couldn't. It doesn't have everything on this. No problem. 
If you look on the back of the fuel profile, if you have that, you have your calories, you have your total fat, you have your total carbohydrates. That's what we care about. Your protein, carbohydrates, total fat. You'll also notice that while there are sugars in these fuel fryers, there's no added sugar. And again, it's gonna come from the milk, milk or the whey protein, right? So these are two pretty good grab and go options in terms of like, I need a snack on my way. The fuel providers are also kind of nice if you're heading to or from a workout because they're easily digestible and they're not gonna sit in your stomach. So, try to choose foods without the added sugar. Now, whoa, all right. So now, in your folder, each of you has also received a meal plan. So I'll have you kind of set your six week challenge packet aside and grab your meal plan. Now, each meal plan is specific to you and on the cover of each one, Renee has written out your specific calories and your macronutrient breakdown. So now, I do not want you to be overwhelmed and it can be very easy to be overwhelmed by this meal plan. So, here's what we need to understand about our meal plan. Each day hits your calories and each day hits your macronutrients. All of the amounts of food are cooked. So before you go home and make all this rice, and you're like, that's a lot of rice. All of these are cooked. That's the first thing. The second thing is, do we expect you to make seven different breakfasts, seven different lunch, and seven different dinners? No. <laughs> no. All of the breakfasts are interchangeable with any other breakfast. Monday through Friday. All of the lunches are interchangeable with all of the lunches, Monday through Friday. All of the dinners, interchangeable with dinners, Monday through Friday. Saturday and Sunday are slightly different as they don't have the additional snack. Just know that, still great meals, still great to have. Just know those meals are a little bit thicker because there's not that additional snack. It's a lot of food. And if there's a day where you're like, I don't like salmon, remember, go to that lean protein. Switch out your salmon with your grilled chicken breast or your chicken thighs with a leaner cut of pork. We tried to keep couples with similar meal plans in, turn of, in terms of like foods so you guys could eat the same things. Perhaps not in the same quantities, but you could eat the same things. At the end of each week, there is a grocery list if you were to make every single thing in that week. We know that you won't and that's okay. I'm gonna ask that you maybe try a breakfast. Breakfast is that thing that's pretty habitual for most of us. So once we find one we like, we kind of stick to it and that's okay. Maybe try a lunch or two. Let's try a dinner or two, right? We don't want you to try seven of each. Right? The idea is to understand that you can have a lot of food that fits within your daily caloric value, that hits your macros, and you don't have to feel hungry. In fact, you may not want to eat all of the food. That's okay. You don't have to eat all of the food. But I want you to start with your veggies because it becomes real easy to eat the protein and the carbohydrates and leave the veggies pushed <coughs> off to the side of the plate. So if you find that as you do this, it's almost too much food, start with the veggies, then the protein, stick to the carbohydrates last, all right? Now, <clears throat> there are hyperlinks in each of the days. This meal plan is also uploaded to our app, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. The hyperlinks go to the recipes. So in your meal plan, if all you do is just click on the hyperlink, It'll pull the recipe up along with all of the ingredients and the nutrition label. Once again, all portion sizes are cooked, right? So when you're measuring out half a cup of rice, oatmeal, whatever, it's assumed that it's cooked. 
Um, and we're also going to log these in my fitness pal, which I'm gonna show you how to do as well. And here's what I'd say. Don't lose sleep if you're the, if you ate the meal plan and it didn't exactly match in MyFitnessPal, as long as we're in the same realm, you're good to go. If you're way off, let one of the three of us know. We can make sure that something isn't amiss, but if we're pretty close, that's good. The egg bites are delicious. The overnight oats are delicious, and I would also recommend the meatloaf muffins. <laughs> They're all in that up. <laughs> all right. So now we're going to talk about my fitness pal. Everybody should have downloaded my fitness pal onto their phone. So we're going to show you a couple of things before I turn my my friends loose here to help you set that up. When we look at labels, we're looking at three things: total fat, total carbohydrates, protein. Right. Now we're not eating a ton of things with labels right, because we're shopping the perimeter, right? So you should be able to just search for those items, but if we are, right, if we are eating RX bars or whatever, there's an option where you can scan, otherwise it's gonna be inputting these kinds of things. So as you begin to look at labels at the grocery store, right, we wanna find things that are higher in protein than they are in fat. We wanna make sure that there's no added sugar, right? We wanna make sure that carbohydrates aren't significantly higher than protein and fat. We just want as much balance as possible. That's what it comes down to. And at the bottom of each of these, there's a list of ingredients. That's where you'll find sugar if it's been added. So now, and I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna try and orchestrate this where we can do it all together, but Abby and Renee are gonna walk around and help you with this as, as well. I'm gonna have you open your MyFitnessPal app, and we're gonna use those numbers on the cover of your meal plan to set your individual goals in your phone. So when you open MyFitnessPal in your app, sorry, I can do this for memory, you're gonna scroll down until you find goals. When you go into goals, the first one, which should not be locked and you don't need premium, says macronutrient focus. Raise your hand, give me an awkward look, we'll know you need help. Uh, don't you have to blur it out, okay? Oh, I don't know. And I did it in one sentence. All right, I don't know. So, so let's go to the three dots. We're gonna go to this one. We're gonna go to goals. Three dots in the bottom right hand corner. Go to goals. Calorie, carbs, protein, and fat. Calorie, carbs, Calories, carbs, proteins, and fats. Seriously, don't be afraid to ask for help. And then what we're gonna do is, this is where it gets a little tricky. You're gonna set your calories, which Renee wrote for you on the meal plan, and then you're gonna go 30% protein, 30% fat, 40% carbohydrates. It may revert your calories back, just change it one more time. 40% carbohydrates, 30% pro protein, 30% fat. Once you do that, I'll do mine. Is it? When you started or when you finished? Uh, no, I mean like, is it in body similar to when you started or when you finished? Yeah, maybe 40, 40, 30, that's more than a problem. Oh, here, yeah, but this one when you did it at the start of this one. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so it would be here for what? Scott, what's going on? I don't think you missed that. It's a weird thing. 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat. Give me the thumbs up if you're good. Okay, all right. Good. Abby, how are we doing? All right. So we're setting all the goals, and then we're going to go public. All right. So, yes. You got Abby. 
All right, so we're gonna now go to the three dots. I'm gonna look at the number So we're gonna go back now to where we were. Um, go back one more time. So we have all of our choices again. We're gonna go to the three dots again. Now we're gonna go down to Privacy Center. And we're gonna go to Diary Settings. Nope, di yep, Diary Settings, Diary Sharing. And we're gonna go, and what this does is it allows myself, Abby and Renee, to see the food that you're logging. And I'll show you in a second, it allows HSN to scoop up all that data so that we can make more broad generalizations about what's happening. It also allows the three of us to make specific food recommendations if we find, like, on a daily basis, you're high in fat or low in protein. We can say, hey, add some egg whites to your omelet that you're having in the morning. Hey, I know peanut butter is awesome, but maybe we'll have just half a scoop. So we're going public. We're going public. Don't worry, people would have to know your ID to even find you, but <laughs> for us. Under friends, right? No, this, we're going to go there and just say. Roger that. Yeah. I just delete the whole app. I'll just just start okay, yeah. so, yeah. 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 All right, so we got our goals. We've gone public. Give me a thumbs up if we're good. Nice. All right, Renee. This was my permission board. I'd be like, next. Yes. Diary sharing. We got one more thing we're going to do. We're going to go back to those three dots again. And you are going to become, oh, I, sorry, Abby. Uh, we'll put you back on. Uh, we're going to become friends. Okay. So we're going to go into our three dots. We're going to go to diary settings, diary sharings. You've made yourself public, but now you should be able to invite a friend. You want to invite me, Swanee1121, and Renee, Renee D. Grady, and Abby? Abby Susan A. No, no, it's, I'm sorry, yeah. Abby Susan A. Let me go to that. I think it's AA. It is AA, yeah. Two A's. Yes. They're going to invite us as friends. This is going to, again, allow us to see the food that you're logging.
So now, if you've never logged food in MyFitnessPal, has anybody not used MyFitnessPal ever before? Okay, so what you do is you go into the diary. We'll show you how to do this as well. You go into the diary and you can search any food. If you've made something from the meal plan, if you put in HSN, or put in healthy set nutrition, egg bites, meatloaf muffins, uh, nutty quinoa, it will pop right up. That way you know you got that recipe if you made it exactly how the recipe said. Otherwise, if you're searching for two eggs, if you're searching for hummus, you're gonna try to choose the ones that have the green check mark. It means that they're verified. Now, there's some really fun tips and tricks that make it faster to use my fitness pal. I'm gonna send those out to you as well so you can kind of look through them. But you can basically, if you eat the same breakfast every day, you can copy it, copy it from one day to the next. All right, but we're gonna try to stick to verified foods. You're just gonna search them, plug them in, you eat the same thing, you can copy it to the next day. Do I have to weigh my food? No. In your folder, at the back of the right-hand page, you will find a quick, quick reference portion guide, right? One side is men, one side is women, okay? And as you do this, right, all you have to do is use your hand, all right? So the plate method is one option, your hand is another. It'll give you a sense of how many ounces you're eating of each of your food. All right, so that was my fitness palette. Do we all have the HSN app? Sweet, let's open up that one now. They do go hand in hand. So three major features on the HSN app. The first one is you can privately message your coach. Private messaging, you will see our little icon in the bottom right hand corner that says Inga's Nutrition, Nutrition by Inga's. If you tap that and write to us, it comes just to your coach. No one else will see it. If you're nervous, you can even say hi. And we'll respond back to you. Hi. <laughs> We also have a group message option. And I actually put a welcome message in there, right? So if you go to your group, that group message is where you can turn in your point sheet at the end of the week. You can share recipes with each other. You can encourage your partner. You can send um, photos from partner challenges. That's the group messaging option. And generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with sending things through the group. We just also understand that sometimes you have personal questions that you don't want to share with the group, and that's okay too. All right, and then last but not least, if you go to where it says training plan, there are short videos in there as well. Yep, training plan. And if there's nothing there yet, it's gonna pop up on Monday. I'm not sure if it'll pop up just yet. But these are like two minute videos. They come from our registered dietitian, Nicole. Um, again, just in terms of education and food. Now, one cool thing we were able to add this time around were what we call habits. Things that we're gonna focus on weekly. So while you get points for everything through the whole challenge, this first week is all about quality. And so habits are gonna pop up daily on your phone. Did you eat veggies today? Did you incorporate protein to each of your meals? Those are your two habits. You control when that habit pops up. So, if you go to the bottom three dots in the HSN app, that's where I am now, and if you go to notifications, and this is where you can turn them on, turn them off, where it says daily reminder, it automatically chooses 10 a.m. Maybe that's too late for you. Maybe that's too early, I don't know. But you can make it be any time you want. So if you want those habits to pop up at the end of the day so you feel like, yeah, I did that, check, check. Great, make it at night. If you want it to be in the morning, like, I'm gonna do this today. Make it for 8 a.m. Totally up to you. When do you want them to pop up? And again, those are gonna change weekly as our focus on each of the pillars of health also changes weekly. Yes? So the, the habits to show up at whatever time, is it something you check off or yep. do you just say, like, like, oh, I did that, so check. That's exactly right. right. Yes, I did that, boop, check. And what's cool is, 
Hit it, Renee. At the end, right, when all is said and done, the HSN app on a computer version, right, which you can log into as well, you're gonna be able to see the calories that you've eaten, how your macronutrients broke down for the entire month, how consistent were you with sleep that week? How consistent were you with water that week? It tracks all of it. So what it does is on a more of a macro level, lets us look at overall, how well did we do? Did we consistently log our food? Were our macro breakdowns what we wanted them to be? How were we each week when we focus on these habits? Right, all of those kinds of things. And it also lets us see in the interim, where we might need to tweak some things to get the most out of the six weeks. Because if you are doing the work, it is our job to make sure that you are seeing the results. And we'll, we'll make sure that that happens. All right, recapping questions. And these are just the questions that we get most often. They're also in the right side of your packet on the front, um, which has all the quote unquote rules. Like, can I have this? Can I have that? Right? So. Supplements, yep, but just log them in your MyFitnessPal, right? BCAs, whey protein, they count as part of your protein, like, total for the day, so just make sure you log them. What about Kill Cliff or Fuel for Fire? Yep, go for it. We think they're great snacks, just make sure you log them. Amino acids like BCAs, uh, electrolytes, yep, you can have them. Again, sustainable means you're doing all the things that you enjoy doing. We're not trying to take things away unless we think they're truly bad for you. Um, creatine. Sure, just make sure you log it and make sure you're trying to gain muscle there. Condiments, right? This gets kind of tricky. We want no added sugar. So balsamic vinegar, right? Um, red wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Put yellow mustard on everything. Um, hot sauce, fine. Herbs, spices, salt and pepper goes a real long way. Hit the garlic, by all means. Um, G. Hughes also makes like sugar-free certain things, it has sucralose, and I know some people don't tolerate that well, but if you are looking for like a barbecue sauce or something with no sugar, go for it. We wanna make this sustainable. I'm not asking you to give up barbecue sauce for the rest of your life, right? I'm just trying to find you like a better option. Um, sweeteners, we're gonna stay away from the honey, the molasses, the maple syrup, the table sugar, the coconut sugar, because generally at the end of the day, all of that is sugars, right? And it all breaks down the same way. So when it comes to Things like stevia, we're going to allow it because again, it comes down to your coffee. That's what we find most of you are most like, I need coffee. And so it's like, then have it. Have your coffee. If you want it with stevia, go for it. If you want a tablespoon of cream, go for it. What we're gonna try to get away from though is the super duper frappuccino at Starbucks <laughs> with the whipped cream and the chocolate sauce on top, right? Like, I don't need perfect, but we're gonna do better. Right? So yeah, tablespoon of cream if you want it, stevia if you want it. Let's see if that can be the new coffee. Um, eating out. It, you're gonna eat out, right? Just do your best to log it, and if you don't know what's in it, then you can't take the quality point for the day. Um, coffee and tea are fine. Let's try to keep it before 2 p.m. And again, like let's try to get it to one cream, one stevia. Other what about foods? Um, if it's a vegetable, if it's meat, eat it. I don't care, right? We're not trying to take things away from you. Um, no almond or coconut flour. We're not trying to make baked goods, right, some other way, right? We're trying to just eat whole foods, so that's why we're kind of taking those off the table. We're gonna try to go more with olive oil than canola or vegetable oil. Um, cold cuts are a great source of quick protein. Let's just make sure it's not the honey they can. Let's try to go sugar free there. Um, and nut butters are okay, but avoid the Skippy and the Jif. Go for the Justins, which is just peanuts. Uh, start with action steps that you created in the beginning of this, right? Ask questions in the group. Sometimes you are each other's best resources. And remember, you can always reach out to any one of us for help. In this first week, we anticipate lots of questions, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. All right, and again, you get points for the following. There is a point sheet in your folder. Each one is labeled with each of the six weeks. Um, you get a point for CrossFit or Move. 
you don't do those classes, that's okay. You need to truly believe that it's exercise though, right? Like if you walked your dog and you know that's not exercise, we're not gonna have it, all right? But if you go for a 20 to 30 minute jog or whatever, that works, that counts for us. Um, seven plus hours of sleep a night, and man, I can't wait to get to talk to you about all the good things that come when you get enough sleep. Um, 80 to 60 ounces, the 80 is for the men, the 60 is for the ladies. We logged our food in my fitness pal, right? Again, that's just so you see what it is you're eating. It's a mindfulness thing. Um, we ate clean, meaning you ate the whole day and you didn't have processed food, sugar, or alcohol. You ate three meals that were balanced in whatever variation, whether it be my fitness pal, use the meal plan, use the plate method, use the hand method, doesn't matter, whatever worked for you, but you ate the right quantity. And then, again, here's our first challenge to you. You will find this as, uh, as well in your folder. I want you to go home and clean out your pantry, clean out your fridge. A lot of times what we do the first week or what we've done in the past is we looked at the new food you're buying. I know you're gonna be buying new better foods. I wanna see what you're throwing away. I am Scottish, I am incredibly cheap, right? So a lot of times I'd rather eat it than throw it away. I'm begging you, throw it away. Don't eat it. Don't be like, this is the last day I can have it. I'm gonna eat the whole sleeve of Oreos. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. I wanna see it being thrown away. I swear, you will feel better for it. Don't try to consume it because in 48 hours you won't be consuming it. Just let it go. So your first partner challenge is to take a picture of all the foods. This is gonna be funny. All the foods you're getting rid of in your fridge and your pantry and you're gonna post it to the group so we can enjoy seeing what everybody else is getting rid of as we dive into Monday and all the clean foods we're gonna be eating. And at the end, <laughs> win a win a chicken dinner, at the end, the winning team will be based on participation points as well as your percentages. So we took in bodies of everybody, we did measurements of everybody, we will only do measurements at the midpoint check-in and we will do in bodies at the final check-in. So we take all of that data into consideration when we choose the winning team. All right, why don't you hit stop on that video? Question.